Saints, how's it going? So we're down at our local community college and I wanted to give you an update tour of the plantings that we did here this past spring. They are looking so amazing. It's morning right now. You can see the morning sun's kind of shining in on everything here. And I am just so thrilled with how everything turned out because we've had an incredibly difficult summer, uh, kind of atypical. I mean, we get very hot here, but not like this summer. This summer we were over 100 degrees for two months and we had incredibly high winds just all throughout the, the summer. And so to have these plants that are so exposed look like they do, I'm just so thrilled with it. So I thought we would just kind of run through the beds um, because we've got lots of in-ground planting and lots of containers that we did. And they're just like, I think for the most part look amazing. So starting kind of up toward the back part of this bed, you can see that there's actually a raised bed in here. Let's head back here. We focused a lot on plants that are high impact, that are low maintenance, high impact, they get really big so that we don't didn't need to use an enormous amount. Like just as an example, the plain the blue salvia, this is one plant and it's like three feet wide by three feet wide here. So planting things like that uh, means we didn't have to plant quite as many uh, as if we were planting things that stayed a little bit smaller. So you can see right below the entrance sign here, there is a raised bed. I went with a single row of purple fountain grass toward the back and now I'm kind of thinking, well, you can still say, see that it says north entrance, but it is a little bit, uh, masked i guess by the uh, plumes of the grass so i'm learning too like i knew that the purple fountain grass would be a really beautiful plant back here i wasn't sure if it was going to block the sign so you know if we plant this bed again this next year i'll know to do something a little bit shorter because this is a sign that indicates where you're at and that's important when you're on a campus so i think i did seven of those grasses and then we did a little grouping of plain the blue salvia right below it and then below that and you can see the honeybees they're already out it's really cool it got down to 50 degrees last night so i'm surprised to even see them out because it's still pretty chilly uh right below that we've got the truffula pink gomfrina i think it looks the best almost here than anywhere else that we planted it because it seems like down here which i'll show you in a minute it looks like it had a little bit too much water these are both on drip irrigation uh you can see here we have a big drift of the suncredible sunflowers which, I mean, they just have this beautiful kind of free look to them and there are not that many of them planted in here. I see the stalk of this plant is right here and this plant is taking up this whole section right here, which is amazing and color all throughout the whole summer. That's the thing. All right, let's head toward the front. On our way, let's take a look at this planter right here. So purple fountain grass in the center, Supertunia Vista bubblegum. There is a sweetheart lime sweet potato vine if you look on this side and you really can see these planters from all sides because people drive in front and the side and they come up from that angle there's a super Tunia vista fuchsia on the back side which is a deeper pink now the only plant i am not seeing that i i thought i put in here were the super Tunia mini vista indigo did i put those in here i'm gonna have to watch back it's been so this bed has been planted for just over three months that's the amount of growth or the amount of time that these plants have had to grow so it looks really good so let's look at the front here you can see i kind of brought the uh, sunflowers out front here and then we did just a mixture of kind of the same plants uh, we like to repeat the color so it looks cohesive so from the bed up top there there was a purple fountain grass groupings of those there's three groupings and then uh, the plain the blue salvia kind of runs as a river throughout this whole bed and then you can see the truffle of pink gomfrina. And that's the only plant that at this point, it's being masked a little bit by everything else in here, which I'm thankful for. Um, but it looks like it had a little bit too much water. Um, I don't think it's an iron issue, but it could be, I suppose. There's a sweetheart lime, sweet potato vine. This is one plant right here. And then we have Super Tunia Mini Vista Indigo, which I learned that they initially wanted to call it yesterday, today, and tomorrow, which is too long of a title, but because of the color graduation that this plant has. So you've got kind of the lighter ones, which I believe are a little older. Then we've got like some medium color and then some really deep color. I think it's really beautiful. It adds an extra dimension of interest. So you can see just that whole repeat all the way through here. And, you know, I just did, I did it pretty um, even, you know, so it would be balanced. I did notice that they had to pull out, it looks like one of the Supertunias 
and it's possible i haven't asked yet but it's possible that the drip malfunctioned or with one of the high wind storms it, they could have just broken the plants off because look at how exposed this planter is like it's not being protected by anything so they popped some fall color in which is great anyway so let's head to the next entrance bed. That's the one we planted right after this one. Okay, we're at the second entrance now and these plants have clearly outdone themselves. You can't really see that the sign says east entrance, which I'm not sure, I'm gonna look when we go back there. They may have trimmed a little bit on those plants, but maybe not. In fact, none of these plants have been trimmed. None of them need to be deadheaded. They just look like this all season without any care other than making sure they have water and fertilizer throughout the season. And in our area, the super tunias do need to be sprayed with Captain Jack's dead bug in order to keep, or BT, to keep the uh, budworms at bay. We do have a budworm issue here. I actually prefer this entrance in that the Super Tunia Vista bubblegum was something different. I actually ran out of the mini Vista Indigo, <laughs> and so I had to do something different up here, and I really love it. I love the contrast of the pink with the plain, the blue salvia, which they are absolutely loaded with honeybees. This is such a pollinator attracting plant. In fact, right before we started filming just now, a hummingbird flew in which the hummingbirds have been thicker this year. And I think if we plant things like this that really attract them, I mean, just, it's so much fun to see that happening. So, you know, we've got our purple fountain grass, which I'm glad we didn't put up in the raised bed here. The raised bed and the sign are much closer here than they are up front. So we just did the groupings right, right in the uh, front bed area with the sun credible sunflowers again, uh, the plain the blue salvia, of course. And then uh, there are a couple of pines in here, both of which I think I know the other one needs to be removed, so I'll show you. I didn't really have much hope for it earlier this season, but now we can clearly see that it needs to be removed um, before we plant it up again. Anyway, around the backside here, you can see the truffle of pink gomfrina, kind of a flip-flop. So we've got the plain the blues with the bubble gum, and then we have the pink gomfrina with the blue Super Tuna Mini Vista Indigo. And that's a really beautiful look too. And in the containers back here, there are two. So one on either side, just like up front. I did the same mix of plants. So there is a purple fountain grass, the Ipomia Vista bubble gum. There's a fuchsia on the back and there is a mini Vista Indigo in here. There's like one little, one little bloom. It's not holding up super well to the vigor of the bubble gum, which there's not a lot that does. So the fact that like this Ipomia is a really great, I'm glad that we put it in there because I think it's such a bright and needed spot in this container. And I love it right up here. I need to do more of this next year. Look at how beautiful. And I like this variety in that it doesn't get so long and lanky. Like you feel like you need to be trimming it off the ground all summer long. I have planted those types of varieties like down in the downtown pots. Every week we were cutting huge amounts of it off the ground. It would be trailing all over. And I like this tidier look so much more. And the fact that you don't have to trim on it is really nice. Um, so it's incorporated beautifully with the truffle of pink gonfrina back here and then the play in the blues. And it doesn't look like they have done any trimming. I do see though, there is a broken branch right here, which kind of makes sense. I bet you the wind kind of barreled right through here and took this plant sometimes. And this is something to be aware of when the play in the blues gets really big, it can get a little bit heavy and the branches are a tiny bit brittle. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Like I'm actually surprised that the, they've held up as well as they have with the amount of wind we've had. Um, so anyway, that container is the same as the one that we just looked at. Really beautiful area. I like this spot quite a lot. We're at the baseball diamonds now and I'm kind of going in order of how we planted them. So the first two areas we showed you, we planted on May 15th. Uh, these were planted on May 18th, just to give you an idea of how long they've been growing. There are seven giant containers. I mean, just massive. I don't even know what the diameter is of these. Um, and this was a complete experiment because each one of the containers has a big tree planted in it. I think this is a type of crab apple, I'm guessing. And they're beautiful, but I just didn't know like how much, because they're exposed and it's very hot. There's a lot of concrete here and I didn't know, should I go with full sun plants? Should I do something that can take more shade? I didn't, I didn't know. And they have done really well. So we kind of did a repeat planting of some of the things we already used, the plain, the blue salvia, which produced a beautiful filler layer here. Just absolutely gorgeous. And then a mix of super tunia vistas. So we've got the kind of the above and beyond recipe, which is the bubble gum, Vista bubble gum, Vista silverberry and Vista fuchsia. And you can see the other two, we won't go to each one of the containers because they are all the same. And that is Rosa. Rosa is responsible for taking care of all of these plants and you've done a phenomenal job. Really happy with everything. So anyway, um, we did a few more containers up by 
a building in the shade on the same day. So we'll head to those next. So Rosa is actually using a hose. There is a hose down here, thankfully, but they have a gator just like we do with a tank that she pulls behind. And that's how a lot of the other containers are watered. And I'm just I'm so thrilled because Rosa was just telling me how much she enjoys it and how she likes to talk to the plants. And I told her that I can definitely tell that she does. You can tell that whoever's taking care of these plants has a passion for it. All right, so there are three very large containers in this area, two of which I planted up the same. I use the same exact plants and I'm kind of glad I did. I like the consistency. This building actually has a cafeteria and library. I actually served on the library advisory board like several years after I went to college here with the guy who we actually bought our house from. Just give you an idea of how small our community is. Uh, but I love this mix of plants. We've got the Golden Dreams Coleus. Always a good choice, you guys. And the Wicked Witch which has been a really stellar performer in our garden. And then we've got the Bewitched After Midnight Ipomia. There's some lemon coral tucked in. So you can see what lemon coral does even in a shady situation. Uh, it's not as vivid like yellow or bright chartreuse. It does take on a deeper look, but it's something very low maintenance that you can put pretty much anywhere. Um, there is a few, there's a few surefire rose begonias right in here. They didn't uh, hold up quite as well to the coleus as I was kind of hoping they would, but they still have some time. So this container is the same as this one. And then we've got a second one that gets, or a third one rather, uh, over here that gets quite a bit more sun. I'm not sure how I feel about this container. <laughs> To be honest like everything looks pretty good the uh, prince tuts are taking on a little bit more of a brown appearance but that kind of makes sense to me with how dry and hot it's been and these are like kind of a water loving grass i think they would be a pond plant and be really happy if they could be in that situation but i'm happy with how um like the height difference between those and everything else in here we've got diamond mountain euphorbia Right here, it's beautiful white blooms, surefire red begonias, which are popping pretty nice. Lots of good color, chocolate drop coleus, and then more of the sweet heart lime, sweet potato vine. But I'm happy that everything has, like nothing has outperformed something else. They're all playing very nicely together. And sometimes you'll have something like chocolate drop I've experienced in the past. I was kind of thinking that it might be the wrong choice in this area because I'm not sure how many students actually use this, which this, I think it would look better actually if this bench had a little bit of a paint job. Uh, but I was worried that that chocolate drop would just cascade over the side because I've had that experience with that plant that it's just very vigorous. But this it looks really good. Like everything is married very well together and I'm happy about that. The next area where we're standing, we planted up over the course of about a week. So we started with containers, which we'll take a closer look at here in a second on the 22nd. And we ended up planting the raised beds over here which are phenomenal. I'm so excited about them on May 31st. So let's take a look at the containers first. Uh, I think I've got three different groupings of plants here. We've got the Skyrocket Penicetum, which is really outdoing itself here. It's beautiful. It is not showing as much white variegation as when it was littler, but the plumes are beautiful too. Kind of that soft pink and then a deeper kind of red in there. And then right below we have a White Knight Lobularia. We have Supertunia Bordeaux. Around this side, we've got Supertunia trailing rose veined, which this is really close to the same grouping of plants that we used along our fence line last year. The only difference is I had coral colored geraniums popped in our containers. And so these look really pretty, beautiful color. In the next here, we've got the Toucan Coral Cannas. There are, how many did I put in here? Three. Do you remember how little these were when we planted them? They were just like these little itty bitty things and they've really thickened up. They put on some beautiful color and great height. I mean, this is such a long expanse that we needed something that was really showy. And then below we've got Supertunia Vista um, Paradise, which is kind of this electric neon pink. And then there's some Supertunia Limoncello. There were some other Limoncello and Bermuda Beach. It looks like those may have fizzled out. Still a beautiful show of color. And then the third grouping of plants, we've got the purple fountain grass, which again, these fountain grass just do so well here. Um, and I'm really surprised actually, we had a really huge downpour of rain one day this summer. And a lot of times that will kind of flatten a lot of our bigger grasses like this. And they have just held up even in the front areas. I didn't even really think about that when we were looking at the front areas, everything held up to that. We got like a little over an inch of rain in a very short amount of time, which is atypical for us. So our plants are not used to that, but they look great. There's an Alternanthera called Plum Dandy, which is a really fun alternative to a sweet potato vine. They've got this bicolor kind of red green. The undersides are this purpley red. 
really pretty and they thrive and do great even in our full sun. There is a Super Tunia Black Cherry on one side. I don't know if I did it on both sides. I gotta look, I can't remember. I think just one side and a Peachy Keen, which the two flowering plants, maybe they were up too close to the building. They didn't get quite enough sun. They're not really, doesn't look like they've really put on a ton of growth or a ton of flowers, but still I'm happy with the look of these. So right here, repeat planting of the same things all the way down. And there's one other container uh, against the other building that's got the same as the first one we looked at. So let's head back to these raised beds and take a look. I love how these raised beds turned out. They're all a little bit different because each one of them presented something a little bit different when we brought plants in because these are a mix of perennials, annuals, grasses, and trees. So each one of them has a little bit of a different look, but I did use the same plants in each one of them, just kind of a repeat. And they are a repeat of a lot of the things that we used around the rest of the campus. So you can see like in this bed here, there's playing the blues, a grouping. I did lots of groupings in these areas. And I tried to make sure like, cause there is a perennial Rudbeckia in here. I made sure to plant the incredible sunflowers, which you'll see like in other beds right over here. I planted those apart from each other so we didn't have too many yellows together, but there's the Vista Bubblegum Supertunia in there. Uh, there is some annual, the Play in the Blues, but then there's some perennial salvia in here too. You can kind of see the little bit of a difference between using annuals and perennials. And that's something I kind of wanted to talk about while we were in this area. You can see over here, there's a perennial salvia that needs to be cleaned up a little bit. And the difference between like perennials are great to use. And there were some questions about why we didn't use more perennials in these beds. You just don't get the impact that you get for as long as you get it with annuals. Annuals allow you the ability to change up color schemes, change up how you plant things from year to year and in commercial applications it makes the most sense to do that it's nice to have some um, kind of some things that come back that are anchor plants like the grasses and the tree but to fill in with annuals around the rest of it really it kind of makes sense to me when we were planting these things the perennial salvias looked amazing but then you have to shear them back and it takes several weeks for them to reflush and look good again and then the rudbeckia which you saw in the beginning of this bed uh, those were really small when we planted there were no color on them at all and now they look phenomenal so it's just like perennials kind of come in and out of looking really amazing through the year um, annuals look good from the about the moment you plant them until the end of the season so we've got heated up yellow gallardia in here as well which when we plant these, they always look so poorly <laughs> for a couple of weeks. They always kind of wilt a little bit and it takes them a minute to root in. Once they do though, they're such a phenomenal performer. The flowers are gorgeous. They're even gorgeous after they're done flowering. And again, none of the plants that we put in here require any deadheading or any trimming in order to look the way they do. Uh, so let's head over maybe to another one. We can see some more of the same plants really, but there's other containers we planted. The uh, angel face, super blue angelonia these were about this big when we planted there were no there was no color on any of them at all uh, and i can't remember i think i put five in here one two three four five it's five angelonias they look amazing super tunia red really red and super tunia white kind of went with the red white and blue theme and there are four of them all the way around this area so you can see in these raised beds here we've got the same perennial grasses which is a type of miscanthus i believe and then there's a crab apple and then a repeat of the same plants that we've been using all over so this incredible play in the blues bubble gum there's ipomia there's some of the toucan coral cannas which i've been noticing i planted some of these in our own garden i've been noticing that some of them are this light coral and some are a little bit deeper and i love it i, I kind of hope that every year i plant this variety that i get that both of those colors. <laughs> Again, perennial salvia, you can see what it looks like at this point. Um, so, you know, you could shear off some of these old blooms and it will, like the second bloom is never as strong as the first bloom. Um, so that's kind of the difference and why we chose to use so many uh, annuals in this area. There are a couple more containers close to the building. Let's head that way. On our way over, I did want to show you these two cypress. This is where Aaron saw the Shawnee Brave bald cypress and he thought, we've got to figure out what these trees are. I love them. And that's what kind of um, spurred on our trip to Boise to look for the cypress trees. And we found three of them at Far West. They're now in the ground on our new property. And so that'll be fun. It's fun to see them looking a little bit taller here. I would say that these are what half grown. They're about the width they will get, maybe a little bit wider, but they'll grow about twice as tall. Maybe not quite twice, but close. And then these are globe willows here which you'll find all over the place here. They're not a super long-lived tree, but they sure are a fast-growing tree. This is a stunner. Look at that. 
surefire red begonias. When I planned this container out, I didn't realize it was on the north side of a wall. I'm not sure what this wall, it's like a little, little shed kind of thing. Um, I didn't realize it was on the north side and it pretty much gets no sun ever. And I happened to have a few extra surefire red begonias. We decided just to load the whole thing up with them and it looks really beautiful. I really like this. And then right here we have a mix of, uh, it's kind of wild at this point, but we've got the uh, truffle of pink gomfrina. This is one plant, one truffle of pink gomfrina in this container. We've got the superbina sparkling amethyst, which is a favorite. I absolutely love the different colors. So we've got like a white to lavender to dark purple. And there is a super tunia royal velvet in here. Um, it's not really holding up to the vigor of the other ones, but you can kind of see a little bit of the color right down in there. This one looks really fun. So Vermilionaire Kufia. It's kind of like the uh, Gallardia in that they always look kind of small and a little bit spindly when you first plant them. There are three in this container and they just are filling it up. And we just talked to some students and they said that they uh, were just over here and there was a hummingbird. So hummingbirds are making their rounds this morning and they are super attracted to Vermilionaire Kufia. There is uh, two heated up yellow Gallardias in here. Super Tunia Honey and Super Tunia Really Red. Just a really warm, color palette right here. I did want to show you one of the beds that does not have a tree in it um, because I wasn't really planning for not having a centerpiece. The tree is kind of the centerpiece of the rest of the beds. Uh, this one does have the miscanthus, but Erin actually ran home. Paul and I were planting all of this stuff, which looks amazing. Doesn't this look so pretty? It's such a beautiful blend of color and texture. But Erin ran, ran home and grabbed a few vertigo penicetums, which if we come around the other side, you can see how beautiful a centerpiece they create. Look at this. And again, we still probably have, oh, I don't know, a month or two of growing season left. Um, and so these will put on even more growth. Super Tunia Vista Silverberry here. That, I think I did end up putting some of that in every single bed. I don't think we saw it in the other ones. So anyway, so, so happy with these. Let's head, I think other side of the building, we planted some shade containers. So these turned out really good. Look at how huge they are. We've got a, a dipped in wine coleus here, a red hawk ipomia. See, this is what chocolate drop usually does. This is one plant. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. Surefire rose begonia. And I did have one diamond snow euphorbia in here, which was a bad idea. I kind of knew that when I planted it. Um, but it was really pretty for a little while until these plants engulfed it, but really beautiful. These are on the, oh, there's my brother right there. He teaches here. There's Joe. Anyway, I planted both of these containers the same exact way. I'm super happy with them. I actually think it looks really pretty up against this brick. Like it's very complimentary. I'm actually not sure that we showed this container in the video when I planted it, but I planted it on the same day as I did the other shade ones around this area. Play in the blue salvia right here in the center. We have a Plum Dandy Alternanther, which kind of cruises around the other side of the container. Super Tunia Honey, Super Tunia Bordeaux, and Super Bina Peachy Keen. Really turned out nice, I think. The next area we're gonna look at is the raised bed by the greenhouse, which from this view, it looks absolutely gorgeous. You can see right away that bright pop of bubble gum back here. And then the contrast, when it's contrasted with the Vertigo Penicetum, that's just so pretty. I am seeing some random colors in here that I don't remember planting though. I wonder if somebody came along. Yeah, it looks like somebody had a few extra petunias from another project. See that right there? That's planted kind of back in there. There's this one that's got a different color pink and that's definitely not a super tunia. Uh, there's this one here. They're just spaced out too equally <laughs> to not be separate plants. Look at this one right there. That's funny. This is what I could see from afar though that brighter white color. Looks pretty though, either way. Flower's a flower, like getting some color in here is awesome. So the vertigo, I can't remember, we did two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 in this area. This one right here, I can pretty much bet that the drip isn't either functioning properly or it's not getting quite enough moisture. This grass really does like very consistent moisture. That's what keeps it growing so nice and tall and vigorously. So I think that this one probably has just been set back by not quite enough. The uh, angel face angelonia, when we planted it, it was about this tall. It was over 100 degrees when we planted and it wilted so fast. It was wilted, wilted before I even put it in the ground when we had the can sitting here. And we came back the next morning because I was kind of panicked about it. I thought I had just probably killed the plants, but they clearly, they bounce, they're doing great. It's a really fun kind of filler layer in this, this bed. So we've got the tall vertigo, shorter angelonia, 
and then the Supertunia bubblegum. I think we just have three more planters to look at now. So the last three planters and the bed we just looked at by the greenhouse, I planted on June 9th. So that gives you an idea of how long they've been growing. Uh, there, these three are all rectangular beds. They're all on the south side of buildings. So they get a ton of sun and heat. So in this one, I have Vermilion Arcufia. I've got a uh, heated up yellow Gallardia, Plum Dandy Alternanthera, which are surprisingly robust. <laughs> I did not expect them to really kind of like creep back into the container and like want to take over a little bit. I've never had them do that before. I've had them get really big, but they're they're gorgeous. And then there are some Super Tunia Royal Velvet. There's one here, one on the back corner, and I'm pretty sure I had a couple in the front here. Those may have fizzled out a, a bit um, just with the, the, yeah, you can see here. Sometimes that happens. You have something that just kind of takes over and something takes the back seat. So anyway, let's go look at the other two. This one looks really nice. So I've got the three purple fountain grasses, which have kind of taken over the sign again, something to note for future planning. But we've got the Plum Dandy Alternanthera in this one as well, as well as the Vermilionaire Kufia and Supertunia Really Red. And they've all, oh, and Supertunia Honey in here. Uh, so a very warm color palette. I think it looks really good all together. Oh gosh, this one looks really pretty. Do you remember how worried I was about this one? I actually told Aaron, because we were filming some other things that day, and I just told him, I don't even want to show these. Nope, I mean, they just looked so bad after I planted them. Um, first of all, I mean, this is a very hard area to make look nice, especially when the plants are all wilted when you plant them. Um, so I am so glad that it looks the way it does. Uh, so purple fountain grass in the center, which I think is better maybe than the three. I think having that kind of big overflowing look instead of too much in a container looks nice. Can you believe I just said that? Three, uh, one instead of three. Uh, Vermilion Arcufia on each side flanking the grass. There are three heated up yellow um, Gallardia. And then there are Supertunia Royal Velvet and Really Red, kind of circling the whole container. And I just really think it's beautiful. And that is it. That is the tour of everything we planted up here at the college this year. Super great experience, really fun to do something away from our own garden, it always is. And it's fun to see how things work together and how plants, I mean, every time we plant something in a new area, you get to really learn about that plant and how it reacts to the different um, things it's subjected to weather-wise and then the vigor of everything and how they uh, respond to each other. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this tour. We will see you in the next video, bye.